Good day, Internet. It's Orf here, and it's time for a tier list. Switching it up a little bit, I guess. Now, I can only do a tier list for bands that, first of all, have enough albums to warrant said tier list, and also bands that I feel like I've listened to enough to where I know where I can place every album. There's a lot of bands I can do this for, but I figured I'd do it for Dance Gavin Dance since I just released a review of Jackpot Juicer. You can check that out. I'll leave a link to it, but... Here we are for Dance Gavin Dance's full discography. I'm not including singles for this or, you know, double releases, but I did decide to include their uh, demo or their first release ever, which is the technically an EP, uh, whatever I say is Royal Ocean. So this will be our first one. And, you know, this one uh, gets a lot of, um, I don't want to say hate in the community, but a lot of people seem to think that this is Dance Gavin Dance's not as good record. Uh, they say that Will Swan's guitar parts aren't as really defined or memorable in this one, and that the band was still trying to, you know, come together and really decide what they wanted to do and what direction they wanted to go in. While I partially believe that's true, I think especially for a first release, for this to be their first release, I think the quality of whatever I say is Royal Ocean is actually great, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, this is, to me, even like one of the better Dance Gavin Dance records when you take into account that it was their first record. What I've noticed with the first few Dance Gavin Dance albums, uh, mainly this and then the first two full-length LPs, is I do not like the screams. Now, John Mess did leave during the recording for Happiness to go get vocal surgery, and obviously it was a huge success because now his vocals are better than ever, but oh man, on the first records, they were rough. I would honestly put whatever I say is Royal Ocean in the A category just because it's pretty impressive for a first release, but because mm, sometimes both vocalists, not just John Mess, but Johnny Craig as well, didn't really know what they wanted to do or how they wanted to sound or everything. I really think I'm gonna stick this down in the B category. I feel pretty comfortable with it in B. Um, a very solid first record, definitely. Like for this to be your first release, I think they came out of the gate with a very defined sound, something very unique that we hadn't really seen before. So I'm gonna keep that in B. Um, and next we're gonna go to Downtown Battle Mountain, number one, of course. Um, this is when Matthias Adolfsson would start doing all of the album artwork for Dance Gavin Dance. He's a fantastic artist, I mean, he blows me away all the time with their album artwork. But I actually like their older album artworks a little bit more than their newer ones, I think. The newer ones are very colorful, don't get me wrong, but uh, the, uh, the older ones definitely, um, to me, took you to a different place. Um, and I get that with uh, Downtown Battle Mountain. Some of the most memorable older Dance Gavin D Dance tracks... Ugh. Blah. Some of the more memorable older Dance Gavin Dance tracks are on here. So the Backwards Pumpkin Song, I Told Them I Invented Times New Roman. Uh, of course, Lemon Meringue Tie still gets played at their shows even, what, 15 years later now. I'm gonna move this up one place. I'm gonna keep this one in the A category. I definitely like it there. I think it's a great album. I don't think it fully hits S tier. There's still a few tracks on here that don't really hit home with me, but as an album, uh, I can see improvement. Uh, after whatever I say is Royal Ocean to this record. Um, so I think they really deserve the A category here. And then we move on to their self-titled album, Dance Gavin Dance. Um, this is when Johnny Craig would leave the band uh, and then uh, some various vocalists would audition and then they would eventually go with Kurt Travis as the new vocalist for Dance Gavin Dance. Um, I didn't know this, I had to look this up, but freaking Kellen Quinn from Sleeping With Sirens auditioned for Dance Gavin Dance. I had no idea that Kellen Quinn had anything to do with Dance Gavin Dance this long ago, but I guess they didn't go with him. I don't know, maybe they thought his voice was too high or something, which if they went with that logic now, I don't know why Tillian would be the vocalist for the band, but... Kurt Travis seemed to be their choice. I think he does a very serviceable job. Um, I don't really understand like when people get in a fight about whether Johnny Craig or Kurt Travis or Tillian is better, specifically Johnny Craig and Kurt Travis, because they honestly sound very similar to me. Like when I was getting into the band, which was after these records were released, 
I would go back and listen to their older stuff, and I didn't know that they were two different people. Like, they really sound very similar to me, so I don't really think one is significantly better than the other. I like Kurt Travis's vocals here, but I don't really like this record, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Uneasy Hearts Way the Most is easily the best song on here. I know it's also the most popular song, so, you know, you don't want to be the one that just likes the thing that everybody else likes, but that really is the best song on this record. And it, I don't know, I think it's a step down in terms of quality and flow from Downtown Battle Mountain. And, you know, at this point, this if this is their second full-length album, I want to see a lot of improvement at this point. And for this to be a step down is pretty disappointing. There's really only like three songs on here that I will go back and listen to, and the rest of this album I don't even go back to listen to ever, really. You know, it's it's unique. I'm stuck between C and D right now. Um, I don't know if it deserves as low as a D, but... You know what, yeah, I, it's a D to me. I mean, um, there's just, it's really, to me, it's just got nothing going for it other than like two or three songs on there. So great album artwork. Um, Kurt Travis does fine, um, but I'm gonna leave this one here. Then we get to happiness. Happiness, happiness, happiness. This is the, uh, the polarizing record in the community. Um, this is where the band would start experimenting with this like new kind of funky sound uh, that they would kind of continue onward after this point. Um, John Mess also left to go get his vocal surgery during this record, so all of the screams in this record were recorded by Will Swan. Now, if I'm gonna be completely honest, I like Will Swan's screams more than I like early John Mess screams. Like, some people are like, oh, they're not as good as John Mess. I think they're better, honestly. Uh, I think they're fine. And people, this is like a love and hate record, definitely. Like, um, some people listen to Happiness and then they didn't listen to Dance Gavin Dance after this record. You know, some of their earlier fans like dropped off once Happiness came out because I think it marked uh, a shift in their style. Um, this is one of my favorite Dance Gavin Dance records, 100%. Uh, it's my favorite of their older era, like the first half of Dance Gavin Dance, you know? Um, it may be polarizing, but I, I don't think there's a song on here that I don't like. Uh, I think it pulls a lot of elements from a lot of different genres. I think they were experimenting in ways they never really had before. I'm perfectly comfortable putting happiness in the S tier. Uh, it is my favorite Dance Gavin Dance album in the older era of the band, and totally comfortable putting it in an S. These tracks just smash, like even today. Um, and I, I really liked hearing some of these songs on the newer Tree City Sessions, number two that they released fairly recently. Um, hearing Tillian and then like John Mess recreate these songs was very cool. Um, but still, I, I think for what they had at the time, this was S tier, absolutely. And then we move on to uh, Downtown Battle Mountain 2. Now I don't really know why Kurt Travis left the band truly. It seems like the band literally just kind of said, well, Johnny Craig wants to come back or Johnny Craig's gonna come back, so uh, he's our vocalist now. I, it doesn't seem like there's any beef between Kurt Travis and Dance Gavin Dance because they tour together all the time, like he's still good friends with the band. And when Tillian had to leave the most recent tour, Kurt Travis was hopping on and doing vocals for some of these songs. So I don't really know why he left, but this would be Johnny Craig's return. And then once again, immediate departure from the band after this record. To me, Downtown Battle Mountain 2 does not um, hit me at the same level as the first record. There are some good songs on here, Swan Soup, Blue Dream, Spooks, really good songs, um, but there's also plenty of songs on here that I really don't revisit at all. Um, I think I'm gonna stick this one in C. It's kind of got this like um, half and half type thing where half the songs are good and the other half are like not really that good in my opinion. C is good, it's average, you know, for Dance Gavin Dance. Um, very, very average. Um, so yeah, I'm comfortable keeping that there. And now we're heading into acceptance speech. I did not appreciate acceptance speech before the remastered version. Um, I've heard a lot of fans complaining about how the original record was not mastered very well. It had some like 
issues with compression and sound effects and whatnot. So the remastered version, except in Speech 2.0, made me found a new love for this album. I could go back and listen to the, some of these songs and really enjoy them in a way that I couldn't really enjoy them as well when this was just the original album, the original mixing. Great songs on here. I think it's kind of got the same thing as Downtown Bell Mountain 2 where it's like, there's some songs that are really good and some that I don't listen to really at all anymore. Especially since the remastered came out, I did find a new appreciation for this album. Um, I think this is like the most solid Dance Gavin Dance record, like really middle of the pack, you know, the most solid, definitely putting this in the B tier, no question about it. Um, songs like Strawberry Swisher Part 3, uh, Demo Team, Honey Revenge, The Robot with Human Hair, The Death Of, and Part 4. Um, great tracks. The rest of them just don't really listen to anymore, honestly. So, you know, solid record for me, definitely going to be in the B tier. And this is also when Tillian joined the band, so I think they were still kind of trying to work out their new style. Now this is the lineup that would stick with the band in later releases. So I think uh, Acceptance Speech was really like the trial album, you know, um, and kind of marked like the transition between the older style of the band and the newer style of the band. Uh, maybe Happiness also kind of had a big shift, but I think this was the one that really like marked the change in where Dance Gavin Dance was going what musical direction they were going in. So B, great job, um, like good transition. Uh, you can tell they were still feeling out what they wanted to do with Tillian's vocals and everything. You know, really, really solid album. And then we move into Instant Gratification. Now, if you've seen my review on Jackpot Juicer, you'd already know how I feel about this album. Um, I'm putting this in the S tier. <laughs> um, while I think Acceptance Speech was like the transition between the older and newer styles of the band, I think Instant Gratification was the first big album in this new style of Dance Gavin Dance. A big change. There's a lot of fans of like the older style of the band that maybe stopped listening. If they didn't stop listening during Happiness, this is probably when they stopped listening to the band, but this came out right before I got into the band. Um, and this just has like the most hits on it. I think it's a nostalgia thing. Maybe if I looked at this like more objectively, like there would be other albums that would be in like my top three, but just since like I have so many memories tied to this album and I do think the quality of tracks, um, the, the quality of music on tracks like Awkward, um, On The Run, uh, we Own the Night, Death of a Strawberry, like, the hits just keep coming with this record all the way to the end. Totally fine putting it in the S tier, absolutely. And then we get to Mothership. Um, ah, Mothership, Mothership, Mothership. This is the one that's like, everybody says this is Dance Gavin Dance's um, magnum opus, so to speak. The big one. I can definitely tell this is when the band exploded in popularity. That's, I said the same thing in my Jackpot Juicer review. This is when I started listening to the band, actually. These were the first songs I ever heard from Dance Gavin Dance. I knew of them when Instant Gratification was out, but I didn't actually hear any of their songs. Uh, and my good friend Tyler showed me some songs. He showed me like Betrayed by the Game, Chucky vs. the Giant Tortoise, and I was in love immediately. Um, so this is the one I blasted more than any other album when I was getting into the band. So I can see why most people will put this one in the S tier. I'm going to put it in the A tier um, for two main reasons. First of all, there are a few songs on here that just I don't really listen to, that just like don't strike me as well as others in their discography. Some of these include Petting Zoo Justice, Chocolate Jackalope. I really don't go back to listen to those as much. It's only a few songs on the album. It's not like it's like half the album or more than half the album, um, but there's still a few tracks on here that I, I don't um, fully acknowledge as like great songs personally. And the other thing is, I think I just got burnt out with Mothership when I got into the band, because this was like the only album I was listening to for like weeks just on repeat. So when I got into the band, Chucky vs. the Giant Tortoise and Inspired the Liars and Man of the Year especially were like some of my favorite songs at all, of all time. Um, but I think just listening to them for years now, I just got a little burnt out of this album. I can't deny the quality. I understand most people will probably put this in S tier. Personally, I'm just going to put this one in the A tier. I'm just more comfortable with it being just, you know, a very good record, but like 
not the best in my opinion, at least not the one I go back to listen to more than any other record. So A tier, perfectly fine with that. And then we move into Artificial Selection, getting towards their very modern stuff here. Um, ooh. What do I think about Artificial Selection? Um, I kind of mentioned there's like, it's a similar problem I have with Afterburner. I mentioned this in the Jackpot Juicer review as well. Go watch it. Um, is that this album kind of hits you with all the best songs right off the bat and then just kind of drops off. Um, there's some really cool creative stuff going on in this record. Don't get me wrong. Also, I love the album artwork for this one. I just love anything relating to trees and the, uh, Color scheme is really cool. The red and the almost purple is really cool, but man, this song starts off with Son of Robot, which to me is like Dance Gavin Dance's best song. That might like, some people might have a different opinion on that, but this is like their best jam. Absolutely. Son of Robot just blows me away. Um, and Evaporate's a good song as well, among a couple others on the record, but Man, it just gets boring so quickly. I mean, it just kicks off so great and just drops off. Um, uh, I don't want to say it's D because I, I do like their style here. I'm going to put this C. I'm going to put this in the C category. Yeah. Um, average to me. Maybe it's just a preference thing, but some of these songs just... Mm, are not great, at least not anything notable compared to like Mothership or Instant Gratification in my opinion. But that's cool. This is kind of the one that sneaks under everybody's radar. Other than like Son of Robot and Evaporate, like most people like skip this one. It sounds like a lot of people are listening to Mothership, a lot of people are listening to Afterburner, not many people are listening to Artificial Selection. C tier is good for this one. Um, Afterburner. Uh... There's kind of an issue of like overproduction in this one. Um, I think in the ambition of trying to be extremely mathy and complex and crazy, they kind of went a little overboard with Afterburner. Tillian's vocals are like very produced and have so many layers to them. It honestly gets to be a little too much at some points. And I, I've noticed that Will Swan's guitar is honestly, it feels like he could just be playing like any notes in any random order and it would kind of sound the same. That's kind of what I said about a few songs on Jackpot Juicer as well. I'm gonna stick Afterburner in the C category along with Artificial Selection. There's a few great tracks on here, and but once again, like halfway through the album, it just drops into songs that I don't listen to anymore. Like I don't revisit them. If I'm revisiting this album, it's like the first half of the album and everything else just eh, like, it's fine, you know, it's it's standard, average Dance Gavin Dance material, definitely. Totally comfortable with keeping that there. And here we are on the last one. Uh, if you've seen my review on Jackpot Juicer, I keep saying that, but if you have seen that video, I think you'll know where I'm gonna put this one already. Um, a lot of craziness going along with the release of this album. Uh, Tim Furyk passing away, Tillian having to leave the band. I guess temporarily at this point. Um, man, what a great record, S tier, absolutely. Um, like, I, that can be controversial, I understand, but geez, like, there's so many good songs on this record. It's very long, first of all, so that helps it because, you know, when there's that many good songs on a record that's uh, 18 tracks instead of like 10 tracks, for instance, um, that increases the, the ratio, like, the, the time spent on great tracks. Still a few songs on here that I don't really listen to that much. Just a couple. Two Secret Weapons is still one of those songs. Current Events is okay. Have a Great Life and uh, Holy Ghost Spirit, the ones I talked about that I didn't really like in my original review. I'm finally coming around to those songs. So in most other cases, if an album even has just a few songs that I don't like too much, I would probably put it lower on the tier list. But Man, the fact of the matter is, the songs that I do like on here are fantastic. They are some of Dance Gavin Dance's best material. I stated uh, that this is probably my favorite Dance Gavin Dance record in my review of it. Um, right now, mm, yeah, I, I think I still feel that way. Uh, I think Happiness and Instant Gratification are like tied for a close second because I've had to go back for this review and listen to their older stuff 
and kind of appreciate happiness a little bit more now, but oh man, the good songs on this album are good, especially since we got Andrew Wells. If people ask me who my favorite Dance Gavin Dance vocalist is, and they're talking about Kurt Travis, Johnny Craig, and Tillian, you know, the main three, I'm gonna tell them Andrew Wells <laughs> because I think his vocals just kill it. Um, if Tillian doesn't rejoin the band, I'd be perfectly fine with Andrew Wells taking over because uh, he honestly sounds like the best version of like Kurt Travis or Johnny Craig, like that older vocal style. But whatever happens, this album blew me away. Absolutely. Totally fine with keeping this in the S tier. And yeah, that's, uh, that's all 11 records from Dance Gavin Dance. Totally comfortable with this tier list. Um, it might not fit everybody's thing, especially since Mothership is not in the S tier, but uh, you know, everyone's got their own preferences. This is mine. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do all the things that make YouTubers happy. I'll see you in the next uh, album review or whatever I release next. Um, but yeah, until next time, hope you guys have a great evening. Take care, all right? Cheers.